I was raised in pretty much what you would consider most icely. If you don't get the Star Wars reference, it's pretty much the, you know, dredges of society. Um, however, a wandering Baptist blue bus came down my street one day and literally saved my life. And I jumped on that bus going to a church I had no clue about. I received the traditional church snack, you know, and heard the message of Jesus. Realizing I needed this guy who seemed so bright and shiny and good, and I accepted him as the Lord. My mom took me and my brother to church like every time the doors open because I was a wild one. But I never really had a relationship with Jesus through all that. Like when the, the, the doors were open, um, but you know, they did youth activities, youth events, but it, it, there, was, there was a missing connection. So I go into the military in 1996 as a generator mechanic. And I went to church services on Sunday because it got you out of cleaning the barracks. So I was like, hey, I'll go to church. And at that time, I really didn't have a relationship with the Lord. Just through those things, I started to realize who God was and becoming known. I knew I, knew I needed Jesus. And so slowly accepting um, who Jesus was and transforming because I'm coming out of this darkness and no good role models. Um, I was lost. And so here I am sitting in Bible class going, what, who, where, where's Israel? I, I, it's over in the Middle East, I think. Yeah, it was literally trial by fire. And so, yes, I had to learn about all the Christian songs everyone sings. And so, but they were very gracious to me to love me through and develop me into loving myself and loving those around me and loving Jesus deeper. While we were there, they were like, hey, if anybody is interested, we're looking for Awana volunteers on Wednesday nights. And I was like, hmm. Well, I wasn't doing much of anything because I was a single soldier uh, on Wednesday nights. So I was like, sure, I'll help out. And, and I get put with the, the nine month pregnant lady. And she's like, <laughs> she literally goes into labor the very next week. And she's like, you're gonna have to teach this class. And so like, I literally get to the end of presenting the gospel message. And I was like, is there anybody that would like to receive the Lord? And this little girl raises her hand. And I was just like, okay, hold on. Right? And right then I was like, oh, there's a prayer. I was like, hold on, pray with me. And it, that was like the first time that I had seen the power of the gospel. I was like, that was not me. Cause I like, I wasn't even like prepared for that. And so I recognized that, that there was a power so much greater in the word. So I, I started volunteering to help out at the with the youth there at the Christ and Youth for there on Fort Irwin. Um, and in 2000, I, um, and so I went to Johnson Bible College where I met this uh, wonderful young lady. Um, and once again, at the end of our freshman year, um, we, we got married, um, but we started going to Calvary Knox. and So we weren't blessed with children for a long time. Um, our first living child came seven years into our marriage. And I got pregnant and now we were at, I was at the, at the end of my master's degree. And so we were setting up our family, Bart would be coming home. And while he was still gone, we, I miscarried that first child. And subsequently we miscarried another three before we actually got pregnant with David. Um, and so come to find out I have a rare blood clotting disorder. I actually have two. And so getting pregnant is not a problem, but clotting out is the problem. And so um, those were difficult moments for us to walk through. In Iraq and experiencing um, some of the more traumatic events, we'd say, yeah, it really drove me to seek the Lord more wholeheartedly, not knowing if you were going to come home or not. Very um, stressful in trying to learn how to put your faith in God. You know, by the end of the 22 months, we realized like, all right, we became, we became more conditioned to realize that we had no control over all of this and that we just needed to do and trust the Lord. And so it was a, it was a great time. I, don't, I use the word great loosely, but you know, um, a time of strong development for both of us mm -hmm. during that time in our foundational knowledge of who Jesus was, what his word had to say, 
and to see his promises constantly and his faithfulness constantly. Yeah. So if you look at Proverbs 3, it tells trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Like Always acknowledge him, him and he will he make, make your path straight. So it's just one of those like that became very real. Real application of putting our faith to work, right? Yeah. Our Christian walk isn't static. Mm -hmm. It's constantly moving either forward or backwards. There's no standing still. You know, unless the Lord is forcing you down into green pastures, and that's the only time things, mo you know, take a pause. We've had our paths shaped, changed, and moved. If you would have told us where we were going to be you know, 24 years later, living in Colombia, of all places, I would have laughed at you and said, <laughs> absolutely not. No, 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 Lord, you don't understand. Here we are, planting roots. And the Lord is literally um, crying us from the military and the stuff he's literally just slowly removing those things and letting us plant here into this church um, slowly but surely you know we have a home fellowship group that we're a part of that we get to be able to be invested in with people and do life together and um, build those bridges it's been fantastic be able to be vulnerable you know yeah i think it's been awesome yeah i got to go through trauma reboot so that was pretty phenomenal uh, learning the purpose in the pain and reminding ourselves of, yes, we are children of God, and that He's for us, mm -hmm. He's not against us. You know us, and you know anything about us. We love, um, when we get a chance to teach about being known by God, we have a five finger principle. Yes, ready? Yes. Get, get in, in God's, God's Word daily. daily. Get, get in prayer daily. daily. Worship with passion. Serve, Serve Him. him. And way, way, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. So. And so that's our big five-finger principle that we try to take with us when we're teaching with kids, and we are teaching with youth. And okay, granted, we might not say those exact things when we're with our small group, but that's pretty much what we're directing you to: is to get in your Bible and have you been talking to Him? Let's talk together with Him. You know. I always look at the kind of what Jesus taught us and. John 15. He's the vine and we're, we're the branches and just abiding and resting in Jesus. Like that, that's the most important thing that my kids could do, my friends could do. Um, when the storm was there and Peter got out of the boat and started walking on water, like when he took his eyes off of Jesus, that's when he started sinking. Mm -hmm. So it, it's Continually keeping your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, is, is what's going to help us move forward.